Hello, friends. We're back today talking about the AZ500 exam. That's the one that earns you the Azure Security Engineer Associate Badge. And we're going to field your questions around what's coming new on the exam September 24th, 2020, as well as your questions around exam prep. This is a short one, so let's get to it. So for this exam, I'm, I'm happy to say the changes are relatively minor. I want to talk to you about your study approach. I've had a lot of, of, of questions come in around that. I, I always do, usually through LinkedIn. So let's just uh, start by talking about what materials are best for exam prep. And best is uh, a loaded uh, word here because it's, it's really a matter of perspective. But I want to give you effective and, and free and easy to, uh, to get your hands on. So when we go to the AZ500 exam page, where you see that notice that tells us we have changes coming September 24th. If I just scroll down, you get down here past skills measured down to Microsoft Learning. You see online free learning. What's great about this free learning is as you are studying and if you need access to complete a lab, if you need access to an Azure subscription, the uh, lab exercises are connected to uh, the Azure Sandbox. So you will have access to Azure capacity as you need it provided by Microsoft expressly for preparing for exams at no cost to you. You don't need a subscription. You don't even need an Azure uh, AD login. It's quite, uh, quite simple. Uh, make sure you check out my AZ500 exam cram series out on YouTube. It's 75 minutes long. There's one installment for each objective domain in the exam, uh, hearing good things, and I'll show you what folks are saying. But absolutely worth your time as the first hour uh, that you spend, or maybe the next hour you spend if you're already preparing. Uh, the Azure Security Engineer track over on LinkedIn Learning is my series that is laid out to cover each domain of the exam. And if I look over there, you'll find that uh, LinkedIn Learning has established a learning path for AZ500 for the Azure Security Engineer Associate. And you'll see each of the five installments in my course. And you may have a question there. Well, why are there five courses if there are only four objective domains? That's because the uh, originally uh, the fourth domain of this exam was quite long, so we broke it up into two smaller courses. I would say that's less true today. The good news is this course is largely up to date. Uh, about two weeks ago, LinkedIn started rolling out the updates for August, and the September update will drop in uh, just a few weeks. It's The September update's literally one video, and it's just some nuance around Azure Sentinel. There's not a lot to it, frankly. So this is solid material ready for you to use today uh, without a doubt. And if you don't have a copy of my Ultimate AZ500 exam prep guide, which includes time-limited free access to that learning path over on LinkedIn Learning, get it at the URL below. And uh, the bit.ly URLs are case sensitive, so be careful with that when you're typing that in. But that's all there is to it. It's free. Get it. Enjoy it with my compliments. Uh, when you watch the exam cram series, I'll share with you how to get access to a bank of uh, free practice questions. I've got four practice exams I put together currently hosted by, by Starweaver. Uh, so if you're interested in practice exams to sort of assess your current state or your readiness before you go in, again, uh, you can get time limited access. I believe they're offering five days free access uh, at this point. So what are people saying about uh, this sort of approach? Well, it, it, almost not a day goes by on LinkedIn anymore when I don't hear from someone who's been out there studying for the exam. So we're hearing that folks are using that new exam cram series I put on YouTube. They're using the LinkedIn material as well and finding that this is useful. Many of my students don't speak English as their first language and uh, finding this is friendly for folks all around the world. So uh, again, grab the uh, exam prep guide and you can have access to everything I've talked about, at least for a limited period of time, uh, at absolutely no charge. And I love the Microsoft provided materials I showed you because they are dialed in for exam prep and you don't have to worry about having your own Azure subscription. All right, 
Let me talk to you about what's new for AZ500 coming September 24th, 2020. Uh, you're going to find this is not as scary as some of you seem to think that it might be. So the way I've laid this out here to just show you is that the objective domain is right up there at the top, the objective domain for the exam. I'll put the subdomain right down here, and then all the little bullet list items that represent those skills measured will be shown right here in the middle. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So here are the four objective domains for the AZ500 exam. Where we will see minor changes are in domains two and three. So implement platform protection, a very minor non-event here, and then a couple of minor changes over in man manage security operations. And I want to talk to you about that manage security operations area briefly uh, today for sure. So under implement platform protection, we only have two subdomains there, the one related to network security, the other advanced security for compute. Where we saw a minor change in verbiage was under uh, the Implement Advanced Network Security. And you're going to laugh when you see this. The change was that word right there. So that uh, skill tested uh, before September was Implement DDoS. So that's the Azure DDoS uh, service. It's now DDoS Protection. Uh, I really think this is largely wordsmithing. I'm not expecting a lot of, of change there in terms of the exam. So does this theoretically mean, you know, if we say implement DDoS, that could, could, could be misconstrued, right? So I think this is wordsmithing you don't need to worry much about. Let's talk about managed security operations. So earlier this year, we saw Azure Sentinel make its way into the AZ500 exam, and we're seeing that area evolve over time. So where we see a couple of minor changes are in subdomain three, which is monitor security by using Azure Sentinel and another configure security policies. Uh, these are the two areas where we see some minor changes in, in wording. So if I look at monitor security, so before September, it looks like this, where we see the changes right there. So configure a playbook for a security event by using Azure Sentinel evolves to be configure workflow automation by using Azure Sentinel. So it's changing the scope of, of your question there. It's going to come down largely to working with Azure Sentinel and, and logic apps to automate uh, process and workflow. Uh, <clears throat> so, so does that mean much difference in terms of your preparation? No, Bra brace yourself. Uh, for maybe uh, a greater breadth of questions. It's about context, because if we look at the next section, if we look at the next subdomain, which is configure security policies, we see the addition of an item here, and it's configure a playbook by using Azure Sentinel. Yes, that's the, the, the same words that were in the previous subdomain. At the end of the day, it means you need to be familiar with logic apps. Okay, so let's just jump over here and I want to have a look with you. And you need to be familiar with Sentinel's triggers related to Logic Apps. So if I click on edit here, I'm in Logic Apps Designer looking at a, a blank Logic App effectively. So with Logic Apps, you have triggers and actions and conditions. So triggers is how we, we start the Logic App. It's how we trigger the, uh, the automation. So uh, I will actually type the word Sentinel here. And this will bring up the Azure Sentinel triggers. And you can see here there are two triggers. When a response to an Azure Sentinel alert is triggered and when Azure Sentinel incident creation rule was triggered. You notice these are both preview. It's, it's not every day that Microsoft incorporates preview functionality uh, into exams, but seems to be the case here. And, and I feel like you know, I've been using playbooks. Uh, and, and automation with Sentinel for long enough that it doesn't feel much like preview anymore. It's been around for, uh, for quite a few months, so uh, no worries there. But that's really what you need to, to do is, is dig into Logic Apps. Get, get familiar with some of the connectors out there. Logic Apps has hundreds of connectors. Absolutely worth uh, exploring to understand what services, uh, both Microsoft and third party, you can connect to there. Uh, go through some of the free tutorials. Uh, I have a Logic Apps tutorial in the exam prep guide, in fact. So if you've not worked with Logic Apps and Sentinel before, put your hands on that and, and kind of open your mind to the possibilities. But I don't think you're seeing a lot of shift here in terms of what it really means for the exam. Uh, and, and folks, that's it. So thanks for watching. 
reach out if you have any questions as you're prepping for the exams. You can reach me on LinkedIn Learning. You can reach me directly on LinkedIn. I'm wide open there. Good luck. Take care.